Today, we talk about the exciting topic, FMI 3.0 with SIL, Software in the Loop Testing Solution. Hello and welcome to another DSpace Learning Bits. I'm your host, Mike Neumeyer, and today I'm speaking with Patrick Teuber, software developer at DSpace. Hi, Patrick, and welcome to DSpace Learning Bits. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Patrick, I'm curious, along with some of our viewers, what is FMI? And explain to us what it might be good for. I can show you some slides if you like. Perfect. So what is FMI? FMI stands for Functional Mockup Interface, and it's a free standard that defines an interface for the exchange of dynamic simulation models. And these models are zipped to a so-called FMU, which stands for Functional Mockup Unit. And the big advantage is that everybody who supports FMI can import and simulate FMU models regardless of the model domain or creation tool, etc. FMI is very popular and widely used, and the popularity is more and more increasing. Currently, there are over 170 tools that use FMI in some way, as you can see in the tools list on the FMI website. And as you can see, DSpace is strongly represented here as well. Wow, thanks, Patrick. A new major version of FMI, FMI 3.0, has just been released. What are the key improvements from the DSpace side of view, and what could they be used for? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, although FMI 2.0 is already a great way to share models and is used by many companies, it has some restrictions. Uh, one restriction, for example, is that there is no array support. So if you have an integer array, for example, um, in FMI 2.0, you have to flatten that array and use separate variables for it. Another example is that there are limited data types. Basically, only the four data types shown in this image are there. And especially if your model has big structure data in it, in binary format and with variable size, then FMI 2.0 does not offer an appropriate data type for that. So basically, you cannot use such structured binary data or you must use some cumbersome workarounds. Furthermore, only one model step size is supported with FMI 2.0. With FMI 3.0, things changed. And first of all, there are a lot more data types now, for example, for the different integer types. Furthermore, there is array support now. It is possible to define matrix matrices and other multidimensional arrays. And that array support means you can send your whole array over one port. And then in FMI 3.0, there's now a new data type for opaque binary data the FMI3 binary type, and that makes it possible to send a large amount of binary data from one model to another efficiently over one port. And then there are also a lot of other strong features like the new clock variables for event synchronization, which also allow multiple sample rates for one model. And the new terminals, uh, which are used for clustering specific variables, for instance, to represent buses, and yeah, many more new features. And those new features enable the FMI standard to be easily used for a variety of new use cases without additional efforts. And from our point of view, the most important use case is AD, so autonomous driving, um, because now it is possible to easily integrate sensor models with FMI 3.0 and flexibly exchange big structured sensor data and video streams across FMUs. Wow, that sounds like a lot of new features. When will DSpace support FMI 3.0? We already do. Uh, System Desk, our tool for the support in creating virtual ECUs and VEOS, our SIL simulation platform for virtual ECUs, support FMI 3.0 since 
release 22B and 22A respectively. And this also includes a new binary type. So if you create a VCU in System Desk and export it as an FMU, you can import and simulate the FMU in VEOS. And not only in VEOS, because the FMI standard enables every tool that supports FMI 3.0 to import and simulate this FMU. And of course, the FMI 3 FMUs are perfectly compatible with our internal DSpace containers like VECUs or Simulink implementation containers. Very interesting. What do you think is the impact of something like this? We believe the impact will be very high and FMI 3.0 will play an important role for DSpace and our customers. Uh, the new data types are already a long awaited feature Furthermore, the combination of all the new features like clocks, terminals, event mode, and so on, makes it possible to model full featured virtual ECUs that allow a realistic simulation of virtual ECUs without proprietary interface enhancements. And because of this, the FMI design group, where DSpace participates as a steering committee member, is currently working on several layout standards that aim to create a standardized way to model VECUs with FMI 3.0. And this also includes bus simulation. The image illustrates the layout standard for network communication, for example, which uses a lot of the new FMI 3.0 features for a realistic bus simulation. And this VCU standardization is also eagerly awaited by our customers. And we believe that the impact of this will be even greater than the AD use cases. Well, thank you very much, Patrick, for speaking with me today and answering some important questions on this topic. For all of you watching, please feel free to visit our website at www.dspace.com and submit any questions or topics that interest you. Have a great day, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.